हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम रोहित शर्मा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पोलिटिकल साइंस आर्य कॉलेज लुधियाना व्हिच इज एफिलेटेड टू पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी चंडीगढ़ टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द आइडियोलॉजी एंड सोशल बेसिस ऑफ कम्युनिस्ट पार्टीज इन इंडिया वी विल ऑल्सो ट्राई टू लुक एट द फंक्शन एंड द डिफरेंट आइडियोलॉजिकल एंड थ्रेटिकल परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ दीज पार्टीज In the evolution of Indian freedom struggle the communist movement developed in India but mostly they remained underground because of the wrath of the British administration The communist movement in India at that time was highly influenced by direction of communist party of Soviet Union after independence and particularly after gaining power in West Bengal in 1977 and retaining that power till 2011 the communist parties of India became important for analysis of indian politics in this module we shall focus on a brief account of the evolution of communist parties in india and shall examine the ideology and social base and importance of communist parties indian politics vis-a-vis -vis cpi cpim rsp forward bloc suci cpiml communist socialist ideas came to india as to the rest of asia through the reports distorted though they were about the epoch making events which led to the emergence of bolshevik russia to paraphrase mao sedong it was the salvos fired in revolutionary russia that brought the message of communism to india most of the colonial countries were populated predominantly by the peasantry and the working class was still coming into existence india comparatively was advanced as against other colonial countries the british requirements to meet the war efforts had forced it to permit the indian bourgeoisie to set up a network of industry in some spheres and simultaneously the british set up the superstructure of railways communications etc the success of the revolution in russia provided a great inspiration and flipped to the world communist movement it was against such a background when communist parties were still emerging in various countries that its indian contingent was formed in tashkent on october 17 1920 the pioneers of india's communist movement were persecuted at every step by the british rulers who launched three conspiracy cases peshawar kanpur and meerut in the course of less than a decade in a planned drive to prevent the growth of communism on indian soil muzaffar ahmed ऐसे डांग शोकल स्मान एंड अदर्स वर इम्प्लीकेटेड इन दीज केसेज हंड्रेड ऑफ अदर मिलिटेंट ट्रेड यूनिस्ट एंड रेडिकल कांग्रेस मैन वर हंटेड एज कम्युनिस्ट वाइल दोज हु वर मेम्बर्स ऑफ एनी कम्युनिस्ट ग्रुप इन एनी पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री हैड टू अंडर गो वेरियस काइंड ऑफ प्रिसिप्यूशन दिस ऑल इंडिया केस एंड स्कोर ऑफ लेसर नॉन प्रिसिप्यूशन shattered the organization of the communist party from top to bottom so that for full 4 years there was no all india center of the communist party the launching of these cases in 1922 to 24 in itself sent the message that the working class and its revolutionary party had emerged on the indian political scene as the british rulers were making it impossible for communist to function an open platform in the name of the workers and peasant party was created the all india trade union congress had already come into being in 1920 communists were to play a greater role in the organization the period also saw peasants organizations being formed in some parts of the country later during 1935 the all india student federation also came into being and within a few years it came under the influence of communists the cpi as a party in a proper sense with a centralized apparatus came into being in 1933 only after the release of the communists accused in merit conspiracy case and soon cpi got affiliated to the communist international in 1934 the merit conspiracy case though launched to suppress the communist movement provided the opportunity for communists to propagate their ideas it came out with its own manifesto even after its coming to prominence cpi it had to work underground for most part of the time in the 1930s and in the beginning of the 1940s it was only 
during the anti-fascist war that it was legalized. The communist movement from its very inception had to confront multifarious challenges. While there were constant attacks from its class enemies within the movement itself, there were various deviations and erroneous understandings. Nevertheless, the dedication and commitment saw the communists playing a significant role in developing the trade union movement in the country. The meeting of All India Congress Committee held in Patna in 1934 in the month of May and the following All India session of the Indian National Congress held in Bombay in October 1934 became the scenes of a furious between Gandhi, the parliamentary program, Wallace and other sections of the right leadership on the hand and the leftist headed by the socialist on the other. The newly born Congress Socialist Party came out more or less as the leader of the opposition to the ruling group in the Congress which consisted of the Gandhians, the parliamentary and the other rightists. The leadership of the newly formed CSP was making a bid for bridging the gulf between the earlier groups of socialist communists and those who rose within the ranks of the Congress in the wake of the international and national development of the early 30s. Central to this perspective was united action between the reorganized All India leadership of the Communist Party of India and the Congress Socialist Party. A formal agreement in the early 1930s for united action was reached between P.C. Joshi and J.P. Narayan. The party general secretaries of CPI and CSP respectively and that agreement played a big role in the anti-imperialist upsurge of the years immediately preceding the outbreak of the Second World War. It helped in the unification of trade union movement as well as in the development of Kisan and student movement both oriented towards the unity of all anti-imperialist forces. However, difference in the paths traversed by two parties can be traced to the fact that while the communists with all the weaknesses revealed and mistakes committed on several occasions stood on the solid ground of the proletarian outlook on international as well as national issues, the CSP has its foot firmly set in bourgeoisie policies. This was so when the communists joined the CSP in working inside the Congress and tried to develop into a genuine anti-imperialist organization. Unlike the CSP, whose membership was confined to those socialists who were primarily congressmen, the communists joined the Congress as communists. The former had their basic loyalty to the Congress organization, while the latter's loyalty was basically to their class and party. Not only did the CSP and CPI parted ways just before the Quit India movement in 1942, the way CPI slowly and gradually started to follow the Rajni Palm Dutt and Ben Bradley thesis of anti-imperialist people's front in India in the immediate pre-independence period led to further disintegration among the communist political groups in the country. This is primarily because of the position that India should take during the Second World War and the strategy to forward the freedom struggle. Political parties in India in the period of anti-colonial freedom struggle was having an independent presence but got rallied around the then umbrella party, the Indian National Congress and fought for the freedom struggle. The immediate aim of all the political forces in India was to fight against the British imperialists and achieve independence, though they differed substantially on the method to achieve the aim. However, the position of communist political parties during the period in India was not clear. They had a dilemma which was spelled out by some early observers. With future developments uncertain, the Indian Communist Party had two choices. It could continue the for, from above alliance with the Gandhian leadership of the Congress, attempting to strengthen its anti-war orientation, it should renounce that alliance tactic and seizing the opportunity provided by Congress vacillation, attempt to lead a more aggressive movement against both imperialist rule and the war. An examination of Indian communist policy and activity during this period shows that increasingly the party departed from the alliance tactic and adopted the from below tactic attacking all other political leadership not only in the Congress but 
among the leftists as well. In the period of the final struggle of Indian independence through Quit India movement, CPI got isolated from the mainstream freedom struggle when in the later phase of Second World War after Nazi Germany attacked Soviet Union and CPI declared the war as a people's war to rally behind forces that support the cause of Soviet Union at world stage. Later on when the Congress gave up the mass struggle after 1942, quit India's struggle and went into for negotiated settlement with the British rulers, CPI rapidly overcame its wartime isolation and plunged fully into anti-imperialist militant mass actions. CPI come out as the most energetic organizers of such heroic action in Telangana, Punarpa, Vyalyar, Tibhaga, etc. It plunged fully into such anti-imperialist actions as the demonstration in support of INA and INA prisoners and RIN reward. The role played in these militant mass action brought the party one again into the mainstream of anti-imperialist movement. Identifiable Marxist Political Parties in India before independence in 1947 was the Communist Party of India CPI formed in 1920, the Forward Bloc and the Revolutionary Socialist Party formed in 1939. The Socialist Unity Center of India was formed immediately after independence in 1948. These parties were having a different take on the question of freedom struggle, particularly on the correct method of achieving independence. Interestingly, the very understanding of these parties on the correct position of India's relationship with countries of the world during freedom movement and in its immediate aftermath became the main point of departure among themselves. CPI as a main reflection of the group having its perception of domestic and foreign politics on the basis of the position of the Soviet Union, the RSP and forward bloc propagating position on issues independent of Soviet Union's position. However, while the former was more revolutionary in its mindset, talking about universal class-based revolution between the capitalist and socialist bloc, the latter was much more nationalist based on the activities and ideas of Subhash Chandra Bose making attainment of freedom with the vision of a socialist society in India as the primary goal and then to extend it at world stage. The fourth formation was SUCI which being one of the champions of ideological sensitivity focused mainly on mass movements and extra parliamentary struggles was against the mimicking of either the Soviet or the Chinese model. Later on after independence in the wake of Sino-Indian War of 1964, CPI was divided into CPI and Communist Party of India Marxist CPIM. However, after 1967, CPIM was again divided into CPIM and Communist Party of India Marxist Leninist. It was in 2004 the hardcore anti statist and anti parliamentary system of communists formed another new party called the Communist Party of India Maoist. In this section, we will see the ways by which all these political parties under the umbrella idea of communism and socialism emerged in the course of evolution of Indian politics. The Communist Parties of India, the primary and the oldest of all Marxist parties in India was the only political party that was formed by Indians but outside India. At Tashkent on 17th October 1920 with a leading role played by Manbarinder Nath Roy to put forward the cause of independence of India. Back home in India, stirred by its stories of the revolutionary upturning of society in Bolshevik Russia and frustrated at the compromising policies of the Congress leadership, rank and file congressman turned to two alternative paths, either the doctrine of individual terror against the British rulers and the Indian agents of communism. The CPI initially attracted attention in December 1921 when, according to Muzaffar Ahmed, the first printed manifesto of the party was distributed at this time. Then Indian National Congress was holding its 36th session then at Ahmedabad in Gujarat. The first manifesto of a party was addressed to the Congress delegates and also distributed among them. CPI on the eve of independence was not at all settled on the characterization of the nature of the national bourgeoisie and of the ensuing ruling class. CPI started between reactionary bourgeoisie thesis and united front with progressive national bourgeoisie thesis. Such a tension arose primarily because there was in the communist movement in India, particularly after independence. The struggle within the Communist Party of India for nearly a decade 
centered on the character of the ruling class and state power and consequently the strategy of the Indian Revolution and the program to be adopted. Ajay Ghosh, P. C. Joshi, C. A. Dang, Indrajit Gupta, Somnath Chatterjee, A. B. Bardhan, D. Raja, S. Sudharkar Reddy are the most known faces of CPI. The CPI considers the Indian state as the organs of the national bourgeoisies as a whole. It upholds and develops capitalism and capitalist relations of production in India. However, it is weighed down and constrained in its operation by imperialism led by US and reactionary interests such as landlords who prove major obstacles in this pursuit. The CPI argues for a national democracy led by the joint leadership of the working class and the national bourgeoisies, while the CPIM argues for people's democracy which is led by working class and spotted by the peasantry. The petty bourgeoisies and the national bourgeoisies. The CPI suggests a front work for workers, peasants, middle classes and the national bourgeoisies to achieve the alternative it seeks. It calls for the joint leadership of the national bourgeoisies and the working class for the constitution of such a front which would create the conditions for a peaceful transition to socialism. It favors parliamentary work and mass movements to strive towards such an objective. With the passage of time and particularly following the Sino-Indo War of 1962, the CPI was divided into CPI and CPIM. This split was a very important development in the history of communist movement in India. In understanding the backdrop of the split, it is argued that the CPI strived to reconcile two main factions, a conservative right and a radical left. The right followed the Soviet line on transition, merged with the nationalist position on war, backed the progressive bourgeoisie's leadership of the Congress and embraced parliamentary over extra-parliamentary activism rather uncritically. The left front reached its all-time high in 2004 national elections, securing 62 seats in Lok Sabha, but within a decade it shrunk to 11 seats in 2014 Lok Sabha election. After 2014, the communist parties are seriously thinking about the possibility of broader left unity and hence SCUI and CPIM liberation have been included in the overall architecture of left front. Let's sum up. In this module, we saw the origin of communist movement in India. We also got an overview of the different perspectives on different social and communist parties that appeared on the map of India. I hope you will try to understand and learn more about the difference between CPI and CPIM. Thank you.